On the build show today, Plumbing 101, we're going to be reviewing the three major piping systems. We're going to be talking about copper, PEX, and CPVC. We're going to talk about how long they've been in the market, how durable they are, how much do they cost, and which one might you choose for your next new build or remodel. Let's get going. If you're building or remodeling, one of the major decisions you're gonna have is which plumbing system to put in your house. On today's video, I'm gonna show you the pros and the cons of all three of the major plumbing systems that you might use on an American house. Let's start with copper though. And my hope is that on each one of these, I'm gonna be objective about the pros and the cons. I've used all three of these in houses that I've built or remodeled over the last 25 years. So I've got firsthand experience with these. So first, let's talk copper. Time and market, when we talk about copper, this is the oldest of all these piping systems. It's been around for ages. And so that's one of the reasons why plumbers love copper. In fact, builders love copper because it has that longevity of time. We know that this is not a new system, that it's untested or untried. For generations, this has worked well with very few failures. We'll get into that in a minute. Next, let's talk cost. Now, copper is the most expensive. Remember, copper is a commodity. And so if you feel that little short section of pipe there, that's pretty heavy. There's a lot of copper in that pipe. And so the prices on the materials are going to fluctuate, but also it's probably the most expensive in terms of install because it's the most labor intensive. So when, for instance, if you're bidding a new construction house, you often are bidding that early in the design phase or probably before you even get a permit, but you're not gonna have the plumber on site for many months to do the top out plumbing, meaning the plumbing uh, pipes inside the house. So six months down the line, the price of copper may have fluctuated greatly. You're either gonna get a plumber who's gonna put a big padding in his bid to make sure that uh, he's accounted for that fluctuation in price, or you might get a change order at that stage saying, hey, we had to buy our copper pipe and it was much more expensive today than it was six months ago when I bid that. So be cautious about copper for using it. Another thing you wanna know is there are two different types of copper. There's type L and there's type M. Type L is thicker, that's what this one is. It's a little thicker wall. So if you've got places where you're gonna be using, let's say underground or in a basement where you're worried about other things happening in the mechanical room, there, where there could be, let's say, abrasion or other uh, corrosive things around, you wanna use the thicker, type L. Now type M works just as well, and in fact, you could use this throughout your house, but I wouldn't bury this in the ground and be a little more cautious on the slightly thinner wall, but either grade will work just fine in terms of piping for your house. Okay, next, lifespan. How long is that copper gonna last? It's hard to say for sure, but you're gonna get at least 75, maybe 100 years from copper. The reasons why you see some failures in copper are typically related to some pinhole leaks that can develop over time. Now, I've never actually experienced that, but I watched a great episode of This Old House on YouTube, and I'll actually link to that below yesterday. And they were talking about some pinhole leaks that a, that a client was having in their basement, specifically on their hot water lines. Well, it turned out what was happening was the anode rod on the water heater was gone, had basically um, was eaten away, and so the water heater was rusting. This was a you know, 10, 15-year-old water heater. And as a result, the rust flakes were coming into the copper piping. And when someone turned on their water, rust would come into the pipe, they'd turn off their plumbing, the rust would fall down and it would lay in the horizontal pipes, which would corrode the inside of the pipe. And in time, it actually made pinhole leaks on any horizontal surface on their copper system because of that. So this is not a usual failure, but it can happen. There are some things that will degrade copper over time. Water hammer, that's one issue that copper has as its Achilles heel. Because it's so rigid, you know, this is gonna come in 20 or 10 foot lengths. You gotta put fittings everywhere. You're not gonna bend this. When someone shuts off a fixture suddenly or the washing machine stops filling, all of a sudden there's gonna be some movement potentially in the pipes. And this can hammer against the studs or the straps in your system. So you have to be really cautious about water hammer in a copper system. And last, let's talk about fittings. You know, copper is probably the most involved when it comes to fittings. We need a fair amount of tools when we're doing a copper job. First of all, you're gonna need a tubing cutter. And then that little point on there, that's your reamer. After you cut it, you need to make sure you ream it and get the barbs off. It needs to be nice and smooth on the inside. Then your plumber is gonna use some sandpaper to sand the outside. And then you're gonna have to apply some flux on there. 
That's this paste right here. And then you're going to use some lead-free solder when you actually put that connection together. And then lastly, you're going to have to put some heat on it. So you're going to have to use one of these. And you have to be really cautious when using heat inside a house to make sure we don't catch our wood framing on fire. So there's a fair amount of labor that goes into the fittings on a copper system. OK, so next up, CPVC. You know, I've actually used CPVC on a remodel on my own house about 15 years ago where I got to be the plumber's assistant on a CPVC repipe job. And this is actually the most common repipe material on American homes. This is about 50% of the repipe market. And after doing that job myself, and, or with a plumber, I should say, I can tell you it was very easy. You know, we really only needed one tool to work with it. That's this, a tube cutter right here. Super easy to cut. It's pretty malleable. We can cut right through there. That's a three quarter two by cut. And then there's really only one uh, way to do fittings. And that's this. This is going to be a solvent, which you're going to use a primer and then a solvent on there. You're going to wipe that primer on. You're going to put the solvent on and then you're going to cold weld that joint together. Now, this is an excellent joint. You know, it's never going to come apart. However, I'm not a huge fan of that purple primer or the solvent for that matter, because if you've got any kind of finished floor below, you need to be really cautious. In fact, when I was making a video on this a couple months ago, I spilled some of this primer onto my desktop here and I still have the purple stain. It is not going away anytime soon. So whenever you're using this, you need to be really cautious. If you're talking about a remodel situation, be sure there's paper down on the floor and you're not getting any of this on because it ain't coming off later. Okay, so time and market. CPVC has actually been around a long time. This started, uh, I believe, in the early 1960s, and I don't think there's more than one manufacturer at this point. I think only FlowGuard Gold is the manufacturer. And this is different than PVC. So the white pipes you see that are your drain pipes, this is not the same thing. This is a different chemistry. It's actually chlorinated polyvinyl chloride piping. So it's got a little bit of flexibility. It's also very resistant to um, chemistry in the water. So if you've got uh, some issues with well water or other things like that that might be eating pipes, this is a great choice, very resistant. When we're talking cost of pipe, this is actually probably the least cost pipe in our uh, inventory here. So you're going to get a pretty cost effective system by using CPVC. You do have a little bit more labor maybe on this than PEX, probably less labor than installing copper because it's pretty easy to make those cuts and make those solvent fittings. So overall cost wise, this is certainly going to be less than copper, maybe slightly more expensive than a PEX install. Lifespan. I think that your lifespan on an install like this is probably between 50 and 75 years. Now this is a guess. This is just based on what I've read and what I've seen. I've seen some reports of this degrading uh, over time. I've not seen that myself, but again, I've only been in the business 25 years, so it's hard to know for sure. But I would say that this is just a hair less uh, than copper in terms of longevity. UV and durability. Now you can't leave this exposed to UV rays, so you can't run this, let's say, for an outdoor hose bib. But when it comes to durability, this is a pretty tough pipe. It has a little bit of flexibility in a longer run. You can see you can get a little bend out of it compared to copper, let's say. But I found it to be a pretty durable pipe. It's, a, it's abrasion resistant. And because it's got that thick wall, I'm not exactly sure how the chemistry works, but I've heard that it actually has a little bit of an insulative value compared to a copper pipe. And lastly, water hammer. In fact, this is probably going to be the best pipe in the bunch when it comes to water hammer. Because of that malleability, flexibility, this pipe is going to be able to take that water hammer shock better than copper and not move nearly as much inside your wall. So this should be a very quiet pipe system in your house. Okay, and rounding out the bunch is PEX. Now, I've actually used PEX probably the most in my houses over the last 15 years. There's three different varieties of PEX. There's PEX A, B, and C. That's not a grade, that's just a manufacturing process. But the two most common that I see in the marketplace is PEX A. And in fact, I'm doing a job right now with this one. This is Upinor PEX. There are a couple of their brand names of PEX A. And then there's PEX B. And PEX B has several brands, but this happens to be Viega PEX, which I've used a lot over the years. And, and two of the differences between PEX A and PEX B PEX A is a little more flexible. You're going to be able to uh, move it around in the wall system a little easier. 
PEX B is a little stiffer, although this is still a flexible pipe. So you're going to go much, much longer before you're going to need a fitting with PEX compared to either copper or CPVC. Time and market. Now PEX is the newest of this bunch. 1972 is when PEX was invented, the year of my birth, so it's been around for 45 years. And it was used in Europe for a solid 20 years before it started getting adopted in America. And I would say it was really the 90s and the early 2000s that PEX has taken off. And in my marketplace, where I am in Austin, Texas, for new construction, PEX is the dominant player. You almost never see either of the other two piping systems in Austin. PEX is by far the uh, biggest system out there. And one big reason is cost. You know, the tubing itself is on par with FlowGuard Gold or with the CPVC, but it's really the install and the labor that ends up being a time saver. Because you can go really long distances, you can buy it in big coils like this, you can go a long ways without a fitting. And the fitting systems are pretty quick as well. You know, you've got two different types of fittings. On PEX A, you can do an expansion fitting. That's where you're going to put a, a barbed um, expansion in here, and it's going to expand this and then contract around your fitting. Or you can do a crimped fitting like this PEX B has, where you're going to put a fitting in there and crimp around it. Stay tuned for a future video where I'm going to really go in depth on the different types and brands of PEX. But for today's purposes, let's talk about how PEX compares to copper and CPVC. So when it comes to lifespan, it's a little bit more unknown how long PEX is going to last, at a minimum 50 years, but I think it's probably on par uh, with CPVC and maybe slightly less than copper. So I think you're easily going to get 75 or 100 years out of a PEX install at a minimum. I'm hoping that they'll actually go longer than that. UV and durability. Now, UV exposure is no bueno for PEX. You do not want this exposed to the sun. In fact, you need to make sure that the plumber is not storing this in their yard because if this is outdoors for longer than 30 days, it's gonna start to degrade. So all of your PEX has to be totally encapsulated, no UV light on the PEX whatsoever. It's gonna be fine in your basement or your crawl space, but be cautious. You don't wanna store your leftover PEX in the job. Uh, or, or other type of boneyard things out in the sun because that will degrade and you're going to cause a future leak if you're installing that old pipe. Water hammer. Now PEX is going to be pretty similar to CPVC. It does pretty well on water hammer, but you do need to be cautious about when you're strapping it and adding hammer arresting devices as well in your system. So it's going to be much, much less than copper, but a little bit more, let's say, than CPVC. And lastly, let's talk about fittings. You know, I did a video not too long ago where I talked about this fitting type right here. This is a shark bite fitting or a push to connect, PTC. There's actually several different manufacturers of these. Shark bite happens to be the Kleenex kind of brand name. These are invented about 15 years ago and they've really started to come on in the market. And as we talk about PEX, I think what we're going to start seeing is more and more people starting to use push to connect or shark bite connectors with their PEX. Now, I've used these in a lot of emergency situations. A cap like this, super handy. I keep both a half inch and a three quarter in my truck at all times for emergency purposes. But I'm starting to see whole houses plumbed with this. And in fact, the shark bite people have an Evo PEX system that's a PEX piping that's designed for their PEX fittings that the entire house could be pushed to fit. I think the big benefit there is certainly going to be a time saver. There also could be a big benefit in that the trades could be less experienced, but still get an excellent pipe install with a push to connect type system. So it's yet to see how much market share that will get, but be aware that there is a push to connect system utilizing really any of these pipes, but primarily PEX, where the entire house would have its fittings as shark bite. Okay guys, let's wrap this video up. We talked about three different plumbing systems out there. You know, it's hard to say what is the right plumbing system for your house, but let me give you a couple scenarios. If you're repiping an old house, let's say you live in a uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s house and you're repiping, it's a good chance your plumber is going to want to use CPVC. And this is a good pipe system. I've actually used this to repipe one of my houses. I liked it a lot. If you're building new construction and you're hoping to build a house that's going to last for many generations, Copper's a great choice. You know, copper's been around forever. If we have an apocalypse, you're still going to buy that a half inch type L pipe at the local mom and pop shop in the middle of Nowhereville, USA. So copper, I think, is still around for a long, long time. But get ready to pay for that performance and that longevity. This is definitely the most costly piping system. 
And when it comes to PEX, there's a lot of different flavors, a lot of different manufacturers in the marketplace. A lot of builders like me have opted to go with PEX on new construction and in retrofit. I've had really good service with PEX in probably the last 15 years that I've used a couple different varieties of PEX. I can only think of two times where I've had a fitting leak and they were fairly easily recognizable. They could be fixed without a whole lot of damage. So any one of these piping systems, if you've got it in your house, they're good choices, but they have some pros and cons and you wanna to talk to your plumber, your builder, the local guys, the distributors, and find out things like, is there any concern with water quality? Is there corrosive water? Do I have well water versus city water? Where's the pipe gonna go? Is it getting buried in the ground in my slab on grade foundation, let's say, or is it going in a basement? Because you're gonna choose a slightly different pipe depending on those things. And you also wanna make sure that your plumber is familiar with that system. So for instance, if you got a plumber that's only using copper, you're probably not gonna get them to make the switch to PEX. Similarly, if you've got a repipe contractor that's using CPVC on all of their jobs, if you want them to bid copper, they're gonna bid it really high because they're not used to it. Hope this video is useful for you guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And by the way, a big thanks to my friends at Products Magazine. That's a magazine I get for free because I'm a builder. So if you're a remodeler, builder, or architect, look for the Products Magazine subscription link in the description below. I get it every month and that's a lot of ways that I learn about cool and new products in our building industry. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.